What's up, Lorehounds? It's Cooper here in the Hilton outside BlizzCon 2015. I'm here with the friend of the site, Seven DeBard from Raid Warning. What's up, man? Not a whole lot. I have a little bit of a voice left. Uh, I've been watching a lot of esports today. It's only been one day. Right. Well, I the plane right in, I actually uh, got paired next to someone who's interviewing at Blizzard for a developer spot. Oh, wow. And his brother works on the Hearthstone team. So I think he's got some, in he's on yeah, the inside track, little... right? Yeah. Nepotistic. But yeah, but we ended up talking Hearthstone the entire way down, and doing that <laughs> on a plane was actually really, really difficult. So uh, I, I, I arrived with no voice. So, so did anything uh, chime you off at the opening ceremony? Uh, there was a lot of stuff. I have to say the um, it, it's going to be a huge year. It's really weird because like I, isn't uh, it the, like they just had a huge year? Yeah, they just had. But now you're looking at like Overwatch. They're literally going to explode in esports. I feel like yeah. they're on the cusp of it in a lot of ways. Yeah, I mean, and, and they were one of the first in esports, right? Like StarCraft effectively started esports with any official. Way, if there is an official way, you could have. But. Right, right. I mean. Yeah, I mean, especially in the RTS like genre, right? And uh, a lot of stuff that they had planned for our, for for StarCraft. I mean, the original one was like, how long was the original one out before two came out? Was it at twelve? Least it was twelve, 12 years. years. Yeah. So, um, and you can tell that they are kind of scared, but not necessarily scared. <laughs> like, here's the end of StarCraft two. Yeah. You know, the, what the do last we do? Piece is coming out. And you see them kind of setting it up for like longevity, you know, the, the story missions and stuff like that. And yeah, one of the things yeah. they didn't really do, which I'm sure everyone's wondering, is they didn't talk about is that free? Is it DLC? Is it a microtransaction? I assume right, it's going right. to be a microtransaction, right? I, like, I, I assume so as well. I mean, keeping it going from an esports standpoint is great and all, but I mean, there's a they lot. They don't of, make money off that, right? And and you see a lot of stuff that they're doing to try and get people into the game more, right? Yeah. The solo stuff. Uh, being able to like co-op with people um, more so than just setting up a bunch of bots, you know what I mean? Like, right. There's yeah. Just, there's there's, there's the some Archon mode. Are, yeah, yeah. I couldn't remember the name of it. Thank you. <laughs> um, but yeah, there's there's a lot of interesting things that they're doing to, to prep it because, um, I mean, it, you know, it, how long is it going to be for the next one, right? And I mean, they yeah, and they're supposedly not making new expansions for it, right? There's not going to be you know, a, a huge brood wars. The, I mean, that's as far as we know right now, there's right. no plan for that. Right, and so the downloadable content kind of, yeah, it'll, it'll continue it and keep it keep it fresh. I I, I have I have good faith in it, that it'll keep going. I mean, it's, just all, it's still a solid game. It's well, yeah, not going I mean, anywhere. Right. No, it's totally going to tank. Legacy yeah. of the Void, just, uh, just going to plummet. After that, it. man, like, why would I keep continue playing, you know? <laughs> Nobody plays that game. But uh, yeah, the, uh, the Overwatch origin, uh, yeah. All the goodies that come along that, with that. that. Was, that's quite like, a package. Like, I don't know why you wouldn't buy that. I, I right? You, you get stuff for all the... It's like a mini collector's edition. You get little goodies for all the games, seemingly, that they have available right now. Yeah. And then you get all the cool stuff for Overwatch. Yeah. I mean, the collector's edition with the statue is pretty cool. Um, but in all honesty, I was like, no, I'd rather just, like... It was of like one of the characters that didn't one of the newest characters, uh, the agent, uh, like Agent Seventy Six. Soldier Forty Seven. Soldier Forty. Yeah, you yeah. know, hey, whatever words. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it seemed like an interesting choice of who they they pick because I feel like he's not the most popular one. Uh, like and he uh, doesn't he's, he doesn't like fit that token accessible kind of right, option. Right. But yeah, I mean, I, I guess got, he's the got, most statue esque, right? He's a soldier. Yeah, but you got giant, the, the, the giant gorilla Wilson guy. And, yeah, Wilson and yeah. Uh, all, all of them. Are, I think his name's Wilson. Um, you got all these giant statues here at the convention. They've been at right. PAX. Yeah. And then you make the one that's just like, it's like it looks like an Emmy. And, yeah, <laughs> it, that's it right. kind of looks and like it's an like Emmy. a semi-new character too. So maybe right. that's what they were thinking. Like, oh, this is going to be, you know, they they had to choose something, right? So they just went with whatever. Yeah, and I like how their skins that they're coming out with aren't just. Kind of random, right? Recolor, they're, yeah. yeah Recolor. Yeah. They're like they're they fit with their backstory, and I thought that was really neat because it, it, there's some some of them you saw the characters in a completely different light. You're like, oh, wow, that's some really cool lore yeah. stuff might be going yeah. on, right? Like, what happened to them to make them so like horribly evil now? Except you know? for Tracer, she's exactly right. She's just wearing right. cool right. chains. Yeah, she's like you know alpha version of Tracer, right? So. <laughs> Yeah, there's some, a lot of there was a lot of neat stuff. So with some of the new characters, at least in Overwatch, do you feel that they're trying to make it the game more accessible, right? Like they made May is like a cutesy, very easy, approachable character. Diva is as well, whereas Genji is your kind of typical right, design. Right. Well, I think they're. You think that's like a, a target? They're purposely doing that. 
Well, I think you, you look at some of them like May, which is very much like a kind of like support class, right? Yeah. You're not going- Like Meiji? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you're just kind of, you're not doing anything like, you're not going to be the front, the person on the front lines, right? You're going to be tying not things up. Not if you're playing correctly. Right, yeah, <laughs> exactly. There will be people day one doing that, but I, I think they're trying to, to kind of pigeonhole into certain areas. It has very much that MOBA feel, right? Like there's the, these different uh, classes that kind of like can combine and make some really cool combos. Some of it, I, I kind of feel like they're just throwing it at the wall. Like they're at 21, yeah. 23 characters yeah. now, something like that. and. Which is a lot to come out with, right? A lot. It is a lot. A lot to balance beforehand, yeah. and because uh, they are yeah. so unique, the di right? They are very different. Yeah. Like some guys don't have the same number of, they don't have the same number of abilities, right? Like this guy may have six, and this guy has three. But you know, and that allows people to kind of get in at certain levels, right? I mean, other other um, games like Dota and League, they have certain characters which are kind of deemed as easier to catch on and yeah. understand. Yeah. Like the, the skill ceiling is still can maybe not as high, but they're solid, right, and they teach you the game. I mean, but there's some weird mechanics I've never seen before in this one, like uh, with with May. Did you see the, the ice wall? You using the ice it wall. Kind yeah. of like a like a rocket jump in a way. And yeah, because like, you, you could stand on it as you're putting it up, and then you, you hop up with it. I was like, this is going to, I don't know. There's there's so many interesting things. I, I didn't even think of that when I first saw it. Like, I figured you couldn't do that on purpose, and then they allow you to do it. It was like, oh, that's pretty cool. And they actually didn't even point it out as being a, no. an ability. Like, you tapped to catch it, and I was like, I literally was like, whoa. Yeah, it, I caught the same thing in the trailer they put out. Yeah. I was just like, oh, I didn't think that would happen. Yeah, and what's going to be interesting is how they balance it, right? And, and I was thinking about this earlier, uh, one of my fancy notes I made, which is, you know, <laughs> when is this going to be like a competitive thing, right? Because competitive play Because we know they're going to try and make it eSports. Totally, right? 100%. Like, I mean, they still keep trying to make WoW eSports, which, for the love of God, just give up, guys. Yeah, right. That's, yeah. Um, I still, like, just PvP it's, in that game. Still, yeah. Anyways, um, but... Let's not go down that rabbit hole. Right, yeah, that, <laughs> yes, that's a whole other like show. Um, but no, you, you look at it, and it with uh, with Hero of the Storm, like it helped them out so much. Like the uh, Heroes of the Dorm challenge yeah. that they did, like they got a lot of exposure before the game was out. So Which was crazy that they. I can, they're smart enough. I can see them redoing the same thing. Like, well, I think we'll start seeing some more competitive stuff. We'll start seeing some yeah. of the name teams playing it uh, and really trying to drive it. I think they're everything is moving towards esports for them. Certainly, I, I'm just, you know, I don't know, is it as accessible for an eSport, like, given that there is so much fluidity, you can change your hero at basically any time you run back to base and stuff like that, and as far as I know, games of its ilk, like Team Fortress 2, don't have an eSports scene. Like, CSGO obviously has an eSports, but yeah. slightly different. But, I don't know, we'll see. I, I feel like there, there's still an element of that there, yeah. right? There's definitely, there's definitely, I mean, obviously, if, there's no doubt in my mind they're gonna try. Right, like, they're gonna try. They're gonna try. They'll throw a lot of it. So let's move on to uh, Orc Baby, the Warcraft <laughs> film. Oh, yeah. So, the, okay, so earlier this week before, when it, when it dropped, I, I watched the 15-second uh, the trailer yeah. version, The right? teaser to the trailer, the which is the teaser to the, to the movie. Yeah, it's like <laughs> teaser inception. And, um, and it did that awesome thing where it like shows you like a two second frame black, two second frame black, like just keep fading in and out. It, it just clips. Yeah, yeah, it just kind of gives you a headache. But you know, the interesting part with it is, it's like I watched it, and there was one frame in it. Like I literally went through it like frame by frame almost. <laughs> and there was one frame in it where they were standing in front of the the storm and keep, and I was like, CGI doesn't look so hot. You know what I mean? There's a lot of yeah. bloom effect, but it's you could tell it was mad green screen, right? Like. Um, and so I think if you watch this trailer, you start seeing, not to pick the part, I still am excited about the movie, Yeah. but you, you start to see like, oh, there's some not so great CG stuff here and there. And that's the thing, that's the done trailer, right? Like there's, they're not going back and polishing that. that they're gonna release they're, that. The, yeah, that, that trailer's released. Right, it's released already. But they will still continue to polish the CGI. Oh, it's certainly it, the right. movie will, but that, I mean, as far as the trailer, that, and that's a concern, like, do you think that hooked people who aren't Warcraft fans? I was Blizzard. thinking about that. I was thinking about it. See, if you think about like everybody who was like at one point in time, Warcraft at its height was in the teens, right? The tens of, of yeah. millions. Even if everybody who played, uh, even if they had it on their alt accounts, still went and watched it, you're still <laughs> looking like opening weekend, maybe what, 30 ish, 30 ish million yeah. that opening weekend. I don't know how much draw it has outside, That's, right? Yeah. And I also feel like this movie is also, you know, five years too late. You know, like, 
It, I definitely feel you there, right? Like Wow's down the five and a half mil, and so obviously it's nowhere near Wow's peak time. But you know, I think they may like get the Game of Thrones bump. People are more interested in that kind of stuff, and they do have crazy stars in the movie. Right. And we, it's legendary pictures, and we know they're going to throw a ton of money behind marketing. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's. I, I I don't doubt that. I, I mean, I'm going to go watch it day one. I'm going to go and and I'm going to enjoy okay. it. Uh, you know, we'll see how it goes. So, yeah, I, I I obviously hope it's awesome, and they do follow through with the trilogy of it. I was a bit concerned, right? Like, because then we saw this opening cinematic to um, Legion, and oh. I was like, "Why is your game CGI better than the movie?" The very first thing I said afterwards, like, "Why couldn't they just made a CGI movie?" And somebody was like, "Well, it would take them longer." I'm yeah, like, "Yeah." But if they had started it back when, <laughs> back in the day, we would already have We'd it. We'd already you know? watched it. Yeah. Uh, it, it's it's beautiful. I mean, that team. I actually watched a little bit of, of the the technical artists and the and the. Uh, modelers and a the animators and talking about how they made that whole scene and how they composited it all and it was just a huge undertaking right yeah. but it's it was in even the individual elements of it were just stunning and how they kind of made it all work together between 2d and 3d was I, I just blew my mind I couldn't even think of it that way it was just like you look at it and like that was 2d and they're like yeah we just didn't want to have to build it in 3d and right. I'm like how did you do that? It's like magic. But yeah, it's awesome. They did some great stuff. Yeah, that behind the scenes stuff or the artist stuff for me just like blows my mind. Because I know nothing about it. Right. So it, it's just like, ah, you know, but you know, then you saw the coders and I'm like, oh, I know that stuff. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. That's no big deal. <laughs> yeah, no big thing. So are we going to start um, a Heroes of the Storm Chogal team? Yeah, but we, it has to be drunken, right? Right, like, yeah, yeah. We have, just so we can play the part, right? Right, like, right. We're playing the ogres. We got to... Exactly. I think it'd be great to do it in the same room and then halfway through just switch, switch. seats. <laughs> so the full effect, right? Yeah. Really mess with people. Yeah. Or we just get up. They'll see us on the stream, cross her. <laughs> one of us has to play left-handed. <laughs> so, yeah, I think it's good. I, I think it's super innovative. I, I don't... I don't... I think it's just... I play, just, they're playing with the genre. And yeah, and I love that. They're just like, let's give it a shot and see what sticks. Like, maybe yeah. this will suck. Right, yeah. like the murky thing, it was just like, they built a guy who was meant to die. And pandas were a joke at one point in time. It became an expansion. That's true. So, and now we got Chogal as a joke in like 2004. Yep. Right before the game came out, I remember. Yeah. Because it was the, the announcement of the last uh, race. Yeah. Was the Ogres. Oh, man. I don't know. I, I think that's cool. There's a lot of stuff they're doing with Heroes of the Storm that... It's really getting me more and more interested in. I, I always, I didn't expect it as much as it's happened, but I, I really feel that even at the end of day, like nearing the end of day one, oh man, I just want to take like a week off and just play games. Yeah. That's it. That's, that's what always happens to me too. Yeah. At any of these conventions really, like yeah. when we go to PAX, I get back and I'm like, I'm going to go play the crap out of Zelda or something. Yeah. I'm going to go play the crap out of uh, the uh, out of Hots and just get wrecked. You know, yeah. like, I'm just <laughs> like be... now I remember why I don't play here as a star that much. I'm not that good yeah. at, at MOBAs, but yeah. So, so the other, um, we have a new, you know, announcer for BlizzCon. Alex Albrecht is actually doing the BlizzCon yes, stuff. Yes, I saw Alex at the beginning, and uh, a friend of mine was with me. He's like, "Oh my God, there's Alex!" And I was like, <laughs> "He's like, he's doing a really good job." I'm like, "Yeah." I just love how he, he does his his the same like get really excited, squealy voice. <laughs> but you know what makes it makes him great? He's, he's really excited about the content. You know oh, what I mean? For sure. Not to he's not fluffy. Alex. It just turned into Alex. I'm sorry, but we really do love you. But it it's good because he gets excited about it, and he's so self-deprecating. Like he just. <laughs> You know, if he screws it up, he's like, oh, I just made that word up. You know, yeah. just like, okay, cool. But I've seen some other people trying to host stuff that are, like, so just stumbling over themselves and so rigid. Um, like that, whenever Mike Morheim is on the mic? Yeah, yeah. It's like, I, I seriously, I think we've been look, watching, like, a hologram version of him, powered by Siri. You know, like, that's it. <laughs> Mike Morheim passed years ago. They just yeah. don't want to, you know, the stock They don't want to admit it. Yeah, they don't take the hit. But anyway, <laughs> sorry. All right, Seven. Thanks so much, man. Cool. Thanks, man.